Um, hi, I'm Julian, and I am here to talk to you about what, something similar to what you just heard. Um, but there was a question earlier about um, what about other features in Scala, right? And so what we're focused on is one of those other features, which is uh, recursive types, right? In Dart, they're called mu types, but we focus on recursive object types. So, ooh, there we are. Um, so I want to focus on several key language features. Um, so first off, path-dependent types. Obviously, it's in the title. Um, second off, um, dependent function types. So you've already heard a lot about them. Um, and I'll go into that in a bit more. And so these two coupled together g kind of give you dsub, right? So where do we sit in this design space? Well, we want to talk about recursive types. And this is where we have our language called Wyvern. So um, if you want to take that next step, we're not quite at um, giving you all of dot, but we sit somewhere between d sub and dot. So what, what do we, why do we care about recursive types? Well, recursive types in, um, or mu types in dot, are um, they're required for expressing any kind of mutual or recursive data types, right? So something like a linked list, you kind of need a recursive type. So to give you a better idea of what we have over here, um, Wyvern is an object-oriented language. Objects can have fields. They can have um, functions. Um, and they can also have these type definitions that we use to define um, path-dependent types. So you can use path-dependent types or these type members in the same way you might use a field. Um, you do a selection on an object or path where the thing comes from. So in this way, you have a type that's dependent on where it comes from or the path that's used to access it. Um, and you can do some interesting things with this. So first off, you can get these dependent function types where your return type is dependent on the type of your parameter. Um, and then we add in recursive types. So recursive types, um, they're bit, they differ a bit in, in Dart and Wyvern. Um, they are quantified over terms rather than types and they allow you to uh, define mutual or recursive types. And so here we have if, it can be defined in terms of something that's defined in the same context. And these are all features that Scala has, and so this is quite a good motivation for what we're doing here. So to give you a better um, grounding, we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce an example. So we define some set type, right? So the set has a type within it called LM, so the type of the elements, and we have a, an insert function that takes in these element types and inserts them into the set. And so now we can define more concrete um, sets where we have like a set of tables whose elements are all tables. We have a set of chairs whose elements are all chairs. And the type system now helps us along and says, well, you can, if you try and insert a couch, that's great. If you try and insert a coffee table, no way, right? Um, so this is the, the basics. So now, maybe what we want to do is we want to extend this to give us a quality of sets, um, something a bit more interesting. And so we define this EQ um, interface, and we want our quality of sets to be extensional. So what we want in this case is set S to equal set U, only in the case that the elements themselves are equal. So we say our, we want to redefine our set type to be um, in terms of EQ, and we say our set must only be equal to other sets whose elements are equal to our elements. And we can use this to define trees as a, uh, as a set of nested sets, right? Um, but now we run into some problems, especially in subtyping. So we say, what, perhaps we want to ask the question, is a tree equatable to another tree? And if we step through this algorithm, we can see that we run into some problems. We unfold tree into its definition of set. We unfold set into EQ. Now we've got an EQ on either side. So we look in, at the internals, and we uh, compare the, the bounds on our type members. Um, so we have a low bound, gives us some contravariance, stops some sides. Um, and we continue, unfold tree, set set, um, look at the insides. We've, we, we come back to our original question. So this is a bit of a sort of toy example, but it can give us an idea of what the, what the problematic features are going on over here. So first off, 
Um, uh, contravariant subtyping is, is, is kind of one of the central uh, culprits. Um, and where does it crop up? Well, it crops up in dependent function types. And so these are your parameter types when you do subtyping between dependent function types and on the lower bounds of type members. Uh, but also environment narrowing. So the, if you're familiar with dot, this, this, this term might um, uh, jump out at you. It poses a problem for soundness, but it also uh, poses a problem for uh, getting some kind of usable and yet decidable subtyping for uh, Wyvern. So where does this show up? Well, it shows up in dependent function types, again, and also in our recursive object types. So if we look at the actual rules, right, we have S all, which is our subtype for dependent function types. We have S refine, which is our, in Wyvern, is our subtyping for these recursive object types. And um, S decal low, which is subtyping for um, low bounds. So we have contravariance over here in the parameter types of our S all, and on the low bounds of S decal lower. And along with that, we also have um, environment narrowing in our recursive object types and in the subtyping of our return types. So I'll get a bit more into environment narrowing later, but get something out of the way. Um, so you've already heard about kernel F sub. We, we sort of adapt the same solution that kernel F sub does by enforcing a variance on our um, parameter types. So what does this give us? Well, it removes the, um, the problem of contravariance in this rule. And it also uh, removes, handily removes the problem of environment narrowing, right? If it's the same type, then there's no narrowing. Um, but now we, so we've, okay, we've sort of solved the, um, the problem of dependent function types, but we still have this problem with recursive types, right? So, uh, so it turns out that recursive types and type members in Wyvern give you the same sort of patterns as you get in Java generics. And we know Java generic subtyping is undecidable. Um, and uh, so it, it helps to look at, if we're dealing with the same sort of patterns and the same sort of things, it helps to look at what's going on in Java generics. So um, we redefine our set EQ um, definition as a class set that extends an EQ with some uh, recursive usage of set, right? Um, and we can see how this translates into Wyvern. Um, so we have, uh, again, set extends EQ using our self recursive our recursive self variable, and then we use um, our E is our type member, which mimics our type parameter, and it's lower bounded by some recursive usage of set. Um, so if we look at Java, we want to look at uh, similar solutions, so solutions in Java to, to a similar problem. So a few years ago at PLDI, Greenman et al. sort of produced this, uh, what they call the material shape separation, which is essentially a a categorization of types in Java into what they call materials and what they call shapes. So what are materials? Well, materials are these sort of data, are the kinds, to give you intuition, the kind of data types that you might want to instantiate, pass around in a program. Um, so in this case, it's much like set, right? Um, and these are permitted anyway. These are, as with any Java type, you can put them anywhere you want. Um, shapes are perhaps the more interesting one. These are the things that specify the sort of broad shape of what a type is, of what, a, of what data should look like, right? So this is EQ. You wouldn't want to maybe instantiate this particular uh, EQ, but you may use it to say, um, as a sort of parameter type to a function to say, give me an EQ and I'll do something with it. Um, so the, in, in the sort of, to get into the more formal stuff, they, they, they show up as um, extended types in these recursive definitions. And, um, the, the critical part of the separation is that they're not allowed in uh, type parameters, right? So this is the, this is the critical thing. And these, these um, restrictions give you decidable subtyping in Java. So, um, so if we look at sort of how these things to sort of inform us for Wyvern, how do these things, uh, what do they mean? What, like, how are these types used? So we have over here our recursive uh, definition of set in terms of EQ. Um, so set is recursively dependent on itself. It's defined in terms of itself. Um, and that dependence is defined via EQ. So in the material shape separation, we identify EQ as the shape, as the type that sort of facilitates this recursive definition. And we identify set 
this allows set to be a material. So we can use set wherever we want, but uh, we prohibit the usage of EQ in uh, type parameters for classes. Um, so now we want an analog for Wyvern, right? So this is where it gets a bit more complicated. Um, so we go back to our old um, encoding of what we have from our Java down to our, our Wyvern, and we look at the usages of these types. So EQ is used as um, the extended type in this definition. Set is used over here in this sort of polymorphic usage, um, and set uh, sort of completing the recursive definition, right? So critically, these um, these uh, these usages are distinct, right? There's a, you could obviously see the difference between a usage of an extended type in uh, in EQ versus a use of in a type parameter, right? These are very distinct syntactically. Um, but in Wyvern, we're not so lucky, right? So we, we have EQ over here, extended type. It says a bound on a type member. In, um, and we have set over here, which before it was this type parameter, syntactically distinct. But now it's, it's just, and just another bound on a type member. So they're syntactically identical. And what we want to do is we want to separate syntactically identical things. And this is particularly difficult, right? So how do we go about doing this? Well. Um, what we do is we look at the material shape separation in Java, and we look at, is, this, is it um, too strong? And we say, well, actually, we can, re we can relax this restriction. Um, in Java, shapes are not allowed in any generic parameters. In Wyvern, however, we only remove them from lower bounds. So now what we've done is we've, we've, we're trying to decouple this recursive um, definition from uh, the, the sort of contravariant aspect of our subtyping. And now we can um, allow EQ as our shape in the lower bound, in the upper bound of our t definition of set, but um, and so it's legal. But in the lower bound of E, we must have a material, and that's shape. So that's all, all legal, all fun and dandy. But still doesn't give us um, decidable subtyping. And the problem here is I, um, I mentioned earlier is environment narrowing, right? So in when you're trying to do subtyping in Java, it's kind of key that your definitions stay the same. Because if your definitions change, then your definition of what a material and what a shape is changes. Um, so this is true in Java because you've got all these sort of top level definitions of types and you just sort of spin through them and you don't change some kind of um, type context, right? But in Wyvern, this isn't true. And to see this, we look at our um, type rule for uh, subtyping rule for uh, recursive object types. Well, um, as you can see on the top there, we're actually modifying the context. And the def any type definitions in sigma bar 2 at the bottom um, have one definition in our type at the bottom, but w um, when we move up to the top, suddenly we've modified this context, and the narrowing itself doesn't matter, but the actual changing of the context matters. Because now, what any kind of material shape analysis we've done on definitions over here has now completely changed because, um, because we've changed the, the actual definitions in the context, right? Um, so what do we do? How do we fix this? Well, what we've done is we have developed two variants of Wyvern um, that approach this from two distinct um, uh, directions. So first off, so we've called WivSelf. It's, um, it places an extra syntactic restriction on uh, Wyvern that says, well, if we pull out uh, these recursive object types from the lower bounds, actually, uh, we, we can fully decouple these um, recursive uh, usages and environment narrowing from the, um, contravar the contravariant subtyping. Um, and our second one is WivFix. WivFix is, um, defines subtyping using two um, different contexts. Now, this may be. Um, uh, some more deja vu, um, because actually it's interesting because we arrived at the same solution as Jason um, does, and uh, but we've extended it to uh, recursive types, right? So to see how this works, um, at the bottom here we have um, uh, we have our S refine rule, which is our recursive object type subtyping, and we maintain two contexts all the way through, thus maintaining the definitions and ensuring that our material shape separation is actually useful in, um, in, subtype, in driving subtype desirability. Um, so with self, on the other hand, this use, still uses the same single context, 
but it places this restriction of disallowing um, recursive types from the lower bounds. What this does is ensures that there is this maximal depth after which environment narrowing doesn't occur. Um, so the usual thing is the restriction is mostly syntactic. To see the, the finer details of that, you'd have to read the paper. But it's mostly syntactic, and it gives us some nice um, features. Um, now, um, what we've done essentially is we've extended the definition of the material shape separation for Wyvern from that of Java to say, well, actually, um, further than, than just separating out shapes from these materials, what we want to do is we also want to say no recursive types, right? So, and if you remember, materials are only things allowed in lower bounds. Now, um, uh, shape, um, recursive types aren't allowed in lower bounds either. So, what are the nice features this gives us? Well, syntactically, it's a, it's, it's a mostly syntactic restriction, which means um, the meta theory uh, remains largely unchanged. And as a result, as an example, type safety, um, while it's quite difficult to get a sort of progress preservation, um, traditional, uh, what, traditional progress preservation, um, we, can, we can reclaim a lot of the uh, meta theory by just defining and encoding into dot. Um, so we have decidability proof for it in COP, along with the decidability proof for um, web fix. And nicely, this retains much of the expressiveness of dot and Scala, right? Because you part dependent types, dependent functions, um, and recursive types. But finally, there are still some questions. Um, if we look at Scala, which is the closest analog to Wyvern, um, does, we, we, we're interested, does, does Scala observe the material shape separation? Do Scala programs observe the material shape separation in the same way that Java programs had this latent observation, right? And secondly, we've added this extra uh, aspect to the material shape separation. Um, how do actual Scala programmers use recursive types? Do they use them in the lower bounds? And what are the sorts of programs we would be excluding by adding such a restriction? Um, so that concludes. Um, thank you. So are there any questions? So can, uh. Could you say a little bit more about the differences between Wyvern and DOT and why you don't just use DOT? Um, so the, there, are some, um, there are some distinctions. Um, most notably, DOT has full intersection and union types. We sort of left this out because we wanted to focus mainly on the aspects we were interested in, which was uh, we felt were these dependent function types, parts of dependent types, and recursive types. Um, there are other aspects. Um, so, so because they've got this sort of general idea of what an intersection is, we've had to give a more specific, you may have noticed we have a more specific version of an intersection, which are these sort of type refinements. Um, and then dots does actually have these um, dual bounds, right? So we only have one bound on our type members. Um, now, there are ways uh, you can get around this by just allowing two definitions of the same type member. But um, yeah, so that's about all of it, I think. Another question? Okay, thank you. Thank you.